glad to be back with you. I've been getting questions about viscoelasticity from some of the viewers and some of my students. And the questions pretty much all boil down to what is viscoelasticity and why should I care? Well, those are fair questions, so maybe we can learn a little bit about it now. All right, let's start with elasticity, not viscoelasticity. Now, if you've taken a class on strength of materials, or sometimes it's called mechanics of deformable materials, uh, you'll see curves like this a lot. Okay, so that's strain and that's stress. Okay, so stress strain curve. And they all look kind of like this. This is one maybe for a uh, ductile metal. Okay, like maybe soft, you know, mild steel or a, a not too hard kind of aluminum. And we, you know, that slope there is the elastic modulus E. Okay, we've seen that maybe. And we always divide this in this uh, plot into two segments. There's the segment over here where that's a straight line, and a segment over here where it's not a straight line. And this is the elastic uh, region, and this is the plastic region. Okay? And we're not talking about plastic like the material plastic. Plastic in the sense that we've permanently deformed it. Now, um, this is a toy that, if you grew up in the United States, you've probably seen this. It's called a slinky. And all it is is just a big, soft spring. And they're just the greatest things in the world. You can do things like this with them. All right, the old ones are made out of metal. The ones I had as a kid are made out of this flat uh, wire. The new ones are made out of plastic. Now, these aren't, these aren't nearly as good, I don't think. But they're more durable. Okay, every little kid who has a slinky, you know, for the first five minutes after it comes out of the box, it looks like this. Now, I'm a responsible adult, so mine still looks like this. But when I was a kid, you know, you play with it like this, and the first thing you do is go boing, and you pull it out as far as you can. What kids figure out very quickly is they're going to exceed the elastic limit of whatever this metal is, maybe steel, I don't know what it is. Um, very soft spring. I can take these coils, and I can pull them so far, I can plastically deform them. So go look at a slinky, and you'll see one that's got kinks or bends, and it doesn't look nice and tidy like this anymore. It's, it's, it's got some, some uh, pretty hard use, kind of battle damage, I guess. And you see little kids, they'll bend it, and then, you know, the next thing they'll do is they'll try to bend it back again, plastically deform it again to make it look like this. But this, and apart from being a fun toy, is actually a pretty good model of elastic materials. Okay? It's a spring. Right? Now, Inherent in this, one of the, uh, the, the fundamental assumptions of this curve right here is that strain rate doesn't matter. That is, it doesn't matter how fast a load is applied, strain is applied, the stress is always the same. So, if I take my slinky, stretch it out slowly like that, come back, let's say I were to measure the force and the displacement and some other things, I could make a curve kind of like this. If I, if I go slowly, I get one answer. If I do go quickly like that, I get the same answer. That's elasticity. Viscoelasticity is something fundamentally different. In a viscoelastic material, and lots of materials are viscoelastic, the strain rate matters. That is, the rate at which you apply the strain changes the answer you get. And the best example I can find here, I guess today's one of these days we're going to work with toys a lot, is this stuff. Okay, it's called Silly Putty. Now, again, if you didn't grow up in the United States, maybe you haven't seen this stuff. It's just a polymer that was invented, I think, for some sort of uh, industrial purpose. And some bright marketing person got the idea, of, well, if I, if I put it in little plastic eggs like this, okay, and write Silly Putty on the outside of them, I can sell this to people and they'll play with it. I'm sure there's, there's more to the story than that, but that's, that's enough for us. And it's this sort of pink kind of salmon colored, I guess. And it's, it's kind of stiff, and it's soft, and it's, it's fun to play with. Little kids figure it out fairly quickly. If you, if you pat it down on a piece of newspaper and lift it up, at least in the old days, you could lift up part of the ink, and so you could, you could read it, and you could uh, uh, pick up a picture on, on this stuff. Okay? So what I, for our purposes so here, we're interested in it as a, as a the mechanics of Silly Putty. So what I've done here is I've made a little cylinder out of this stuff. All right, let me see if I can... Uh, make this as cylindrical as I can. That's pretty good. Alright, so here we go. Here's a little sort of hot dog shaped piece of silly putty. Now I'm going to start pulling on the ends here slowly. Very slowly. And I can stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch. Okay? 
several hundred percent strain, there's no problem with this stuff. Okay, it's one of a two, three, four hundred percent strain somewhere in that neighborhood right now, and I can just keep doing this as long as I want. Now eventually it'll get so thin it'll break. Okay, it can't even support its own weight anymore. So let's take this same piece of silly putty. I'll rub it back, form it back into a uh, sort of that cylinder. Whoops, got a kink there. Let me try this again. All right, so I'm plastically deforming it. I mean, you can elastically deform silly putty, but the elastic region's about that big, and the plastic region's about that big. It's pretty hard to elastically deform this stuff. It makes great super balls. You can you can bounce this stuff off the floor. Okay, so here I've got the same piece, and I think I've got enough the creases out of it. Okay, I'm going to take this same piece of silly putty and I'm going to do one thing different. I'm going to change how fast I strain it. Wow, look at that. Exact same piece of silly putty. All right? Same temperature, same everything. The only thing that changed was the rate at which I strained it. And when I did that, see, it shattered. Okay, I can even put this back together. It's, it deformed plastically, but it broke on a nice clean fracture line like that. Okay, that's that's fracture. It didn't do that when I stretched it slowly. Okay, that's viscoelasticity. That's that's a really simple example. And there are lots of viscoelastic materials out there. Okay, plastics usually, but lots of other things too. Wood, as will creep under load, that's a viscoelastic phenomenon. So if I take a piece of wood and I hold it like this long enough, it'll eventually stay that shape. Or if I apply a load to it and just wait, it'll sit there and settle and settle and settle for a long time. So if you're going to deal with viscoelasticity, there are a couple of curves you probably ought to get familiar with. And they all they both have time on this axis. Okay? Make sure I'm doing this right. First thing I want to tell you about is relaxation. So let's say I apply a strain to a piece of a viscoelastic material, like a piece of plastic or something. All right, so you do nothing and then I apply a strain and then I hold that strain for a long time, not forever maybe, but for a long, long time, okay? So what I've done here is I've taken the, maybe the ends of a, of a piece of a, of a bar or something and stretched them and held it, okay? That's what this means, nothing, nothing, stretch, hold. And this is a displacement, okay? This isn't stress. So what's stress look like? Okay, this is time on this axis, not strain. So this, does, this isn't anything like the strain displacement curve we saw before. Stress strain curve. So let's see, what would stress look like? Stress is the inter internal force in the material divided by the cross-sectional area. Well, what happens is, as the material, and you, know, you apply a strain, and you get a stress that goes on along with it. And then what happens over time is it drops off. Okay? The material stretches and when it stretches, the internal force goes down, so the stress goes down. Right? Internal force over area of stress, that goes down. This is called relaxation. Right? And that's, this is something that material people know about. Right? And when somebody says, oh, if I have a spring that's taken a set, the spring has lost some of the, the spring force. So, well, I have a spring and I put it under load and I left it there long enough, it took a set. Well, that's what that looks like, right? Okay, well, that's one curve you need to see if you know about. Here's another one, okay? So rather than applying a known displacement at the ends of the bar, I'm going to apply a force and then just see what happens, okay? So same thing, I'm going to take a bar of material and I'm going to see what happens over time. And here's my force. And here is time, and this is going to be, let's see, make sure I get this right, this is displacement at the end, so I'll just call that strain, alright? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a force, nothing, nothing, bam, apply a force, let it sit for a while, and then let off, okay? Well, it doesn't look too good, does it? There, that's better. So, step force, nothing, pull, with a known force, don't know what the displacement is, but I know what the force is. So maybe this would be like hanging a weight from the end of a bar, okay? This would be like taking this and hanging a weight from it for a while and then removing the weight and letting it uh, recover. 
So what this is going to look like now, you can so, something's going to happen when the force is applied, and something's going to happen when it lets off. So we get nothing, and then what we see here is like that. All right. Now just, this is just a sketch; it's not perfect, but you get the idea. All right. So the strain builds up over time, and then when you release it, the strain relieves over time. Right. This is characteristic of a viscoelastic material. All right, last thing. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop here. There are some material models for viscoelastic materials. I'll tell you about them in some other video. But this is the big idea. When you're dealing with viscoelasticity, in fact, here's another good example. I'll leave you with this. Creep. Okay, I have a couple of, of uh, pieces of uh, eggs full of silly putty here. And a couple of days ago, I took the silly putty out and I formed it into as uh, perfect a sphere as I could make. And I put it in the egg, and it, it, it stuck up, was smaller than the egg, so it fit in the egg. What it looks like now, all right, it's still in there, and it's crept, it's sort of flowed into the egg. Over time, it, it deformed, all right? This is creep. This is what viscoelastic materials do. If I had a, maybe a glass or a metal ball, it would have been a ball still. But this stuff is not. It actually formed, uh, flowed to take the shape of the egg. So viscoelastic material, the rate at which you apply a strain matters. If you apply a strain slowly, you get one kind of behavior. If you apply a strain quickly, you get a different kind of behavior. That's the grounding idea of viscoelasticity.